Welcome to the third tutorial for Sound Sorcerer. In this one, we're going to be talking about something pretty important called envelopes. All envelopes are is whatever, is it, whatever input is put through them, they change the volume over time. Doesn't sound like much, but they're pretty powerful. Uh, I have a melody here. Uh, there's no envelopes on it, and this is what it sounds like. Really simple melody. Uh, we're going to go back to... Uh, something I told you guys about in the first tutorial, uh, which is where if you uh, want to put a really simple envelope on your notes, you can go into the melody node and type style, nice. And then what that does is give a little bit of ramp up time and ramp down time when the note begins and ends. So here's what that sounds like. Great, so on that you can hear that there was kind of a little bit of a space between the notes and that they smoothly started and stopped. Okay, so that's that's a really simple type of envelope. Uh, we'll take that out for now because we're going to do some more advanced ones. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, create an envelope node. See under note processing right here, it's called envelope. Make some room for it. Oops, hook it up. Okay, so cool, we have our envelope in the chain, but what exactly is an envelope, and what are all these crazy parameters down here at the bottom? Uh, well, let's flip over to the Wikipedia real quick, and let's check out what's called an ADSR envelope. Um, I'll have this link on the page next to the tutorial too, so you guys can check it out. Okay, so this kind of shows how, how an envelope works. I'll bring up the bigger picture. Okay, I guess there's no bigger picture. Okay, so here you can see A is for attack. Uh, this specifies it starts from completely quiet going up to its full volume. From there, it spends a certain amount of time decaying to a lesser volume, and then sustaining at that volume, and then releasing back to silence. That's how a, an envelope works. You can picture a single note going through this process of getting louder, getting a little bit quieter, holding, and then releasing. Okay, in Sound Sorcerer, we actually have something else called hold. And so it goes in between attack and decay. So we have an attack, and then we have a hold, where we hold the attack volume. Then it decays, sustains, and releases. So we have one extra one. So back to Sound Sorcerer. Uh, you can see here in the properties window, we have all our settings for attack, attack volume, hold time, decay time, decay volume, sustain time, and release time. Let's just put a simple... Uh, envelope on the on it so that it takes 10 milliseconds for attack and 10 milliseconds for release and the rest is uh, the rest is nothing so basically what this will do we'll take that off real quick well let's leave that on okay so let's hear what that sounds like <laughs> Doesn't quite sound like when we had a, the nice style on there, does it? Uh, you might have heard that, heard that popping. And the reason for the popping is that if you look at the melodies, there's no rests in between the notes. All they are are just a bunch of notes jammed together back to back. So what that means is when it's coming through uh, the envelope here, it'll go attack, decay, sustain, and then as soon as the next note comes, it's like, oh, okay, it's time to release. But the next note starts its attack. And so basically, the first note never got to release. Um, and so there's there's a couple ways to solve that. Um, the simplest one is right here, there's this checkbox, new notes interrupt old. Turn that off, and then basically the new notes that come in won't interrupt uh, the envelope already going, and they won't start until the envelope's done. So let's hear that. So that sounded a little better. So let's put that back on, and there's actually I want to show you guys another way to do it. Um, here under the melody node, we actually there's actually a staccato setting, which staccato is uh, you play the notes at the same interval. So like if they were quarter notes, you'd play them starting on the quarter note boundaries, but you don't play them for the full length. Um, so staccato means the notes are detached, whereas legato means that they're attached. So by default, all the notes are legato. So let's uh, 
let's uh, put in a little bit of staccata. Go 0 0.01. So what that does is uh, just a little bit before the note ends, it'll stop, and that'll give the envelope time to release. So let's hear that. Don't think I put in enough time. Let's try that. There we go. So I put in a staccato of 0.1, which means for the last tenth of the note, it'll be silent. And that gives the envelope time to uh, do the, uh, the release portion of the curve. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, cool. Let me look at my notes real quick, see what's next. Okay, uh, I wanted to show you guys real quick uh, these parameters at the bottom. So we saw the new notes interrupt old param uh, checkbox, which lets us define whether or not uh, notes can interrupt each other. Uh, we also have this checkbox, well, the checkbox right above it called release after sustain. What that does is uh, if that's turned on, whenever it finishes the sustain time, it'll automatically go into release, even if the note's still playing. Uh, that can be useful sometimes. And then also the one above it is uh, sustain before release, or rather finish sustain before release. So what that means is if you, while the note's playing, if it stops, like while it's decaying, uh, that specifies whether or not it can skip straight to release uh, or if it has to go through sustain first. So if, if this is checked, it has to finish sustain before it can release. If it's unchecked, it can just go straight to release from whatever state it, it, it's in. Okay, so cool. Time to show you some samples. Show you guys what we can do with this. Okay, let's pull up the first one. Okay, so let's hear it. So this one sounds kind of bell-like, and how I did it is I made a short attack time of 10 milliseconds, a decay time of 100 milliseconds with about half decay volume, and 890 uh, milliseconds release time. So what that means is that it it takes 10 milliseconds to go from quiet to full volume. Then the next 100 milliseconds it takes going from full volume to half volume. And then from there it spends 890 milliseconds going from half volume to quiet to silence. Um, that all adds up to one second, which it'll show you here at the bottom. And so, uh, and this our notes have length one one second. So, uh, and the envelope is one second long, so it works out perfectly. Okay, also notice on this one that it has both release after sustain true, as well as finish sustain before release. So this makes this is what makes it kind of bell-like, and that when you hit a bell with a hammer, it's going to make its noise and then stop. It's not like you can hold, hold the note like you can with a keyboard or a flute or something like that. So this is how you get that. Okay, next one. Go to the flute. Let's hear how that one sounds. Cool. So you can hear it's kind of fluty. And how that happens is there's a 100 millisecond attack time. So a little bit longer than the other one, quite a bit longer, tenth of a second. Um, then we have a decay time of 400 milliseconds. That's almost half a second, quite a long time. And our volume is just a little bit over half. And then our release time is uh, is 300 milliseconds, which is kind of a which is a third of a second, so kind of a long time there. So a little longer attack, more decay, and more release, and that's how we got the fluty sound. Next one. This one's kind of piano sounding, or it's very electronic sounding, but it sounds sort of piano-ish. Okay, so let's look at that. Really quick attack time of 10 milliseconds. That's about the minimum you want to do to uh, make sure it doesn't pop. Decay time, 300, 
300 milliseconds and it decays to a pretty low volume like a quarter volume and then it has uh, over half a second of release time that's what gives it that sound on the next guy this guy's going to be a little bit different Okay, so this one is a little different. Let's check out the numbers first. We have a really long attack time going to about half volume. So it takes about, it takes half a second to go from quiet to almost full volume. I mean, almost half volume. 100 milliseconds to full volume. So it's actually going up in volume for that 100 milliseconds. Then the release time is 10 milliseconds. Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Almost sounds like the notes are being played backwards, doesn't it? And it kind of is because our uh, our envelope is actually opposite of what it normally is. You normally have a uh, short attack time and a long release time, but we re reversed it, and so the no notes sound reversed. Okay, next one. Yes. Okay, now we're gonna go to a uh, kind of a slow synth sound. Uh, kind of like breathy like you hear in like really mellow trance so let's hear that you might have this going on in the background and have a punch here uh, something else in the foreground no mystery how this happens a thousand millisecond attack time going to half volume and then uh we can see that the decay volume is at half, and that release is also another thousand milliseconds. Uh, so the reason why we have the decay volume at half is because uh, if we put it to full, it would pop. And the reason why is uh, after attack, we were at this height, the volume. Okay, and then there's no milliseconds here in between, and then we go to the decay volume. And so if we had this up here, it would basically go halfway up for the attack and then start all the way up for the release, or rather the decay and sustain and all that. And whenever you have a big shift in volume like that, it'll pop. So listen to this. But putting it back to the middle makes the pop go away. Something important to remember with envelopes, that if you're hearing popping, you're probably doing something wrong. Perfect. Okay. And on these guys, you might notice that the envelope was two seconds long. And here on the melody, the notes are length two seconds. Just to make sure there's no confusion there. Okay, and then I want to show you guys one last thing. Where'd that go? Oh, right. Cool. This sample kind of puts it all together and makes a, a weird little melody so you can hear it in action, different envelopes. There you go. That's all there is to it. Envelopes, pretty easy.